Okay, hello everyone. My name is John Ennis, Curator, Producer at Journeys in Design. Welcome to our online design studio, also known as My Kitchen. Today, um, we're really celebrating our Linen Stories 2020 program with an interview. And uh, so Journeys in Design is producing two programs this year, Salvage Scotland and our Linen Stories. Our Linen Stories has been a three-year program, rolling program of exhibitions, events, uh, walks and talks and workshops. And uh, we've been exploring contemporary design and heritage behind the cultures of linen industry and flax fibre growing in Scotland and reaching out to our neighbour linen nations. So we've um, had exhibitions up and down Scotland. I've been lucky enough as well to go and link through in Lisburn in Northern Ireland uh, to explore the links between Scotland and Northern Ireland in relation to linen and flax fibre. Um, there are two key elements to the project this year. One's called Flax Fields, which is looking at where flax used to grow in Scotland up to the 1820s really, and linking that with contemporary design studios in a circuit around the county of Fife. And there are other projects called Making Millie. Um, so uh, I, we worked with a wonderful illustrator designer, Sue Shields, to develop a tea towel in tribute to the Millie. Now the Millie is a term uh, which used to be a pejorative term when I grew up, um, and I'm from Lisburn, Northern Ireland, but now I work in Edinburgh in Scotland. And that term was used to describe the, the women who would come out from the linen factories dirty after a long day's work, and so it was quite a pejorative term. In fact, these women were the backbone of the first industry in Scotland and Northern Ireland, the linen industry. Multitasking, super skilled, uh, bringing up families and working a long day in the factory. So of course there were, and the, and the conditions in the factories were, were, uh, were very difficult as well. So producing the tea towel is a way of honouring those women. And further, for our Edinburgh exhibition, we created a display in Scotland called Ur Millie. And that was really to, to link with a further level uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland, and that display consisted of 10 Millie dolls made up from the tea towel, uh, 10 made in Scotland and 10 made in Northern Ireland. So it is a delight for me then today to introduce uh, a woman with Millie's in her, Millie in her roots and who's very kindly agreed to join our Making Millie programme in Northern Ireland this year. Carla Campbell. Hello, Carla. Hi, John. How are you? I'm well indeed. It's great to see you. And it was lovely to, to meet you and chat to you in the last little while. We were <coughs> introduced by um, a friend and colleague, uh, Liz Beaton. I believe you worked together. Yes, Liz and I worked together in the assembly. In um, the assembly, right. Yes, uh -huh. and, Liz knows. Go ahead, John, sorry. I was going to say the immediate thing that springs to mind um, is the emblem of the Northern Ireland Assembly, which is a flax plant. It is, yes. And it has the, if you look at the logo of the Assembly, it has seven flax flowers, which is one for each county. Wonderful. The, the um, history I behind that, that. that logo, yes, uh -huh, that's what Wonderful. it is. But that's where Liz and I met, and um, we've been friends ever since, so she knows that I love anything crafty or anything that I can learn something new. Um, she also knows that I was doing a bit of family history. Um, so she thought this would be perfect. So she phoned me up and she was like, you have to do this, this project. It's just right up your street. <laughs> so you were, you were happy enough to get the call? Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, well, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. It's lovely to hear you mention family history because that links me into the project in Northern Ireland and we're working with PRONI, the Public Records Office of Northern Ireland. And together with those people who'd like to contribute a, a millie for display, um, we're sending out a family history tree that people can work with PRONI uh, using to develop their own um, linen lineage. You wouldn't have the copy that you've got? Yes, I do. So this is what comes right. with. Um, so you have like a family tree set up one. Yeah. And there's also a chart for you to 
um, put in a wee bit more detail about Fantastic. the relatives and stuff. No, that um, goes out to, so in Northern Ireland, we're working with Prony, and that goes out to anyone who would like to make up a, a Millie with us. Now, you mentioned you did a bit of tracing of your, your, only family, his, your own family history before you got this um, chart. How, how did you manage that, and what was the um, history? I have done it online, mainly just through, because I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just having a stab at it because I was interested to, to sure. find out. And which um, family member was it? It was my great grandmother. So I, uh, my mother and myself lived with my great grandmother when I was born, until I was about two. Right. Um, she lived up in the Shankill area in Belfast, and then when my mum's mother died, we moved back to Cumber to move in with my granda because um, my mum has a lot of younger brothers and sisters that she right. then had to help look after. But um, my grandmother and I were very close all through my childhood but you don't ask the questions of you know what so what did you do because <laughs> no, it's your granny and your granny's just always been your granny right <laughs> you know, they didn't have a life before being your granny um not not in your childhood head they didn't anyway sure. um so after mum my mum passed away when i was 21 so after she passed away there wasn't really anyone to ask those questions of when i got to the age where I was curious about, you know, what did my granny do, and you know, where was she from? And um, the more I looked in, the more qu the more questions it gives you. I think the more you look into your family history. Sure, sure. Um, but on the the census, then through ancestry, it directed me to the census, and there's the 1901 census and the 1911 census, both online. Okay, right. You can look up, and it shows you the actual form that the usually the head of the household would have filled in so they digitized um, all those records yes uh -huh, yes so it's in there um typed in but then you can also click into the pdf image oh, so you can see the actual form which is oh, amazing because you can see your your ancestors handwriting and yeah. signature and um in some cases an x if if they were unable to read or write but on my grands she was 16 during the 1911 census. Um, her mother had already passed away, so she was living with her father and her younger brother and sister. And her occupation is listed on the census as flax spinner. There you go. So had you, had you any notion that it was a link to linen before you started looking? Not a clue. <laughs> really? Quite interesting. And the other interesting thing is that you end up in Cumber, which is a great linen town yes but in fact your great-grandmother worked in belfast so yes. we don't know which mill or or where exactly that was i don't because i haven't gone in to well, that think, level of detail that's something i would like to do now with I think this is, done this. exactly i think this is where prony would love to start working with folk to trace that um lineage more fully and get an, an, a notion from other documents that they hold Prony and it's a wonderful organization I visit a few times now. It's a very welcoming building and open up in this wonderful atrium in the Titanic Quarter and the staff are fantastic so absolutely that will be a very interesting journey for you to uh, to continue. Yeah. But here you are in Cumber as I say and I know from our previous chats there's another linen link through friends of yours to the linen industry locally there. Yes. Um, well, Cumber Mill was one of the mills that didn't close that early. It was still running until, I think it was 97, 96, 97. Which I had um, so, yeah. Yeah, so it was still still going then. Um, so lots of people that I would have went to school with and people slightly older than me um, would have went straight into the mill after school for work. Mm -hmm. um, but my other friend, her grandfather was the caretaker in the mill for a while and when we were about nine or ten he took us in one sunday up okay. into the mill when there was no one else there to let us have a look which um you know this big imposing building that you see people it's a closed big wooden um arched gate wow, that, you know the workers would go in and out of but you know, if you didn't work in the mill, you weren't allowed in there. So it was a bit like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, you know, like ah, walking behind the there. 
fantastic. So he took us in up to the top room, which had um, machinery. And I couldn't then have told you what it was. I'm assuming now it was like looms and stuff. And actually the in the pack. Yeah. Right, the spinning the machine. That came, there's a photograph. Um, and this is exactly what was up in that top room, all this type of machinery. Very interesting. So that's the card that we send out to anyone who would like to contribute a, a linen milly and make one up for us. And that's actually been salvaged from an old linen works called Stocks in Kirkcaldy. And those pictures from 1927. Wow, brilliant. Interesting. But there, there you go, you're remembering that kind of machinery as a, as a nine-year-old visiting the factory. Yes. Um, the, the mill obviously is very big, so when we were up there with my friend's grand, he lifted us up to the windows to look out. You could see right out over Strangford Lock, right down to Scrabble Tower. Fantastic. Um, and it was amazing. Sweet. Yeah. The smell in the place is something that you'll never forget once you've you smelled that smell you mentioned you the smell was very strong in your memory of it so yes like it was it describable it's like i don't know if it was just the flax or the linen or the machinery or a combination of all three but it was like a an oily smell um it's very hard to to describe i would know it in an instant if i smelt it again interesting but, um, it's like the fibers, it's almost, I think you can smell it in the Folk and Transport Museum when you go into the weaver's room. It's that, you get that kind of similar smell in it. And obviously there's no oil and stuff. It's a big wooden sure. loom in that one. So that's but what makes me think it's more the flax than It's very the interesting. You mentioned the smell. It's such a, uh, an important part of memories for a lot of people. And I was over in Kortrijk in Belgium and uh, some of the old mill workers that I spoke to there, their most potent memory was the smell of rotting flax and of, of the spinning rooms. The same in Scotland. Um, I've spoken to a number of people, been very privileged to meet some mill workers who are now in their 80s. Um, and again, it's that smell so, so significant for people. Um, mm -hmm. interesting you mentioned that. As a, as a riff on that, we uh, put some flax in a bottle of water during our 2018, 2018 tour. And we let it rot during the process of the tour and you could open it up and smell it. And it certainly got more potent um, as we got down the line and the thing was rotting. But very characteristic uh, of, of industry in certain times and linen industries in certain times in Scotland, Northern Ireland on the continent. That's what people talk about, the smells. So there you go. Um, you have this linen in your in your blood and in your in your experiences growing up, and there you are uh, helping us contribute to our linen Millie um, tea towel tribute by making up a doll. And just briefly, this is a bit of a call out to anyone who is interested in helping us create more uh, Millie dolls for display. I'd like to mention Sue Shields. She's a very talented graphic designer who constructed this um, drawing and tea towel from which you can dry your dishes or, or make a doll up. So thank you to Sue for her fantastic work and the detailing and the uh, instructions indeed that she's put on the tea towel uh, seem to be very well received and certainly the dolls made up and I have one beside me. This is uh, made by one of the seroptimists in Lisburn for our original display. So we had 10 women in Scotland, 10 women for now, make up that display and we're hoping to expand it now uh, with an appeal for more, more help. So thank you for, uh, for answering that. Um, I happen to know that you're quite dexterous when it comes to, to crafting as it is. You want to tell us a little bit about your, your skills there? Um, well, my main craft would be crochet. It's my, my main love when it comes to crafting, it would be my go-to. Anything, and I, anything I to show us from your... Um, I have most of the stuff that I make, I give away because it's generally people keep having babies. So I have all these blankets to make. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for those pesky kids. Yes, but I did, um, during lockdown, we had the, the VE celebrations. Sure. Um, and you know none of the shops were open to be able to go out and get anything so just to kind of brighten up the place for the day I made oh, some oh fantastic VE day bunting <laughs> absolutely brilliant I love um, it 
Yeah, and I'm in the middle of a scarf for uh, a friend. Actually, the friend whose grandfather was the, the caretaker in the mill. There we go. Before, so. Oh, she's, yeah. she's really lucky. That's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. So that's, you, you, have, underway. you have a certain capacity, but when it, uh, when it comes to sewing, were you experienced at sewing as well? No. Rubbish. <laughs> so you can be a complete beginner when it comes to sewing and still give a go to the millie doll. Absolutely, yes. Um, I'd done, school, I'd done sewing at school, that, like so many of us had. Um, but, you know, I would be there halfway through my project, having, you know, holes in it, things unpicked. And I remember making a cushion at school and mine was woeful. And my friend had this amazing, she had made a burger bean bag and she had corduroy <laughs> and all these different colors to represent the tomatoes and the burger. And, and there was me with this wee square that I couldn't even. <laughs> Nothing like, I'm sure she's not crochet, crocheting bunting either, Carla. I'm sure that the, the uh, turned. So as I understand that the processes would be the cutting out, uh, the sewing up, stuffing of the doll and then individually marking and we've been very keen that people don't get any instruction on how they mark it and just do as they wish and sometimes it's very very simple this is beautiful just a little simple blue ribbon around there and i think this uh, lady's hitched up millie's skirts on that one uh, but yes sue has very cleverly uh, together a little story of, of millie's she has included in the design some instruction on on making that up how did you find the instruction following it up the instructions were great um it is a pretty straightforward pattern i still have my instructions here okay good that's what's <laughs> left of the tea towel <laughs> that's what's left of the tea towel yes um and anything that i wasn't sure of i youtubed and you know was okay. able to find easy enough well done um, but and having having done craft and stuff, you you know some of the terminology like um, right sides together just means that you're putting the two facing sides together rather than so that it's inside out. On this, on this. Yeah. One. So you're putting Millie's face and the back of Millie's head together. Okay. Right. And that just sits, and then you sew up the right side. Sew it up, and then you can turn it inside out, and that means that all your your stitching's all on the inside of the doll. Of then you don't see your your stitching. And then, um, and then it would come to you. Did you'd leave a bit to put the stuffing in, presumably? Yes, it's marked on the the pattern. There's a bit about that that says leave this for stuffing. So okay. you just literally, I started at the top of it, sewed round my lay till I got to the bottom of it and left it open. Good, good. And what did you use for stuffing? What did you use for stuffing? I used an old pillow. Ah, brilliant. So, oh, Sue, now, Sue has said that in the past, don't go out buying stuff. If, you could, if you've got an old pillow, it makes the ideal stuffing no. toy. An old pillow. Um, I know growing up, I had an old teddy that I loved and the stuffing kept falling out of it. And my mum stuffed it with old tights cut up. So there you go. You know, Another option. anything like that would do to stuff it. Great stuff. Well, look, I think it's time for the big reveal. So we have a look at, uh, well, we'll call her Carla Cumber then. Carla Cumber. Are you ready Absolutely. for her? <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Outstanding. Oh, Carla, she looks fantastic. That's really, really lovely. I'm seeing lots of little details there. Would you like us to take us, take us through how you've decided to mark your, your Millie? Yep. So um, I gave her red hair as a nod to my Granny Adams. Um, whose hair was grey all my life, but um, there is red hair in the family. Fantastic. Um, and I believe my granny did have red hair. <laughs> um, I, from scrapbooking I used to do years ago, I have bits and pieces left over. So I have these, they're called brads, but they're just the wee split pins that you would have used in school to make the wee um, puppets that their arms move. Okay. Um, a little articulate. They looked like buttons. Right. Oh yeah. Um, and some just lace ribbon round her waist for her waistband. Um, I googled some embroidery stitches and had a go at embroidering on the chains that were already illustrated. So you're just embroidering over it. I must say, Sue's done a beautiful job with uh, these are the key tools of the trade, really. And yes. Whistled when the, the the production line would have stopped or whatever. 
but they're beautifully illustrated and you have embellished those with a little stitching on the chain. Yes, just on the chain, nothing major, just um, I think it's called chain stitch when I, I looked it okay. up. Great. Um, I've given her a dirty hand print. Hey! <laughs> Just as a nod, to, you it know, was dirty, it was dirty how work. Dirty it was, yeah. It wouldn't yeah, have been absolutely. a very clean environment to be in. And another nod just to my granny down here. It's a wee transfer that I had, and it says, First kisses aren't so special. It's the last one we remember." Oh, and it's beautiful. it's so true. When you lose somebody, that's you know, it's it's the last time you did things with them. It becomes really special. Well, that's beautiful. And here in her waistband is some flax. Oh, some flax. So tell us about that. Where did you get that? So the flax is from my garden, which oh. just sprouted up. Um, it does tend to flax, tends to sprout up here and there in Cumber. You would see it growing. Right. Um, so there would have been flax fields local at some point. I'm assuming so. Obviously, I don't remember any flax fields, but um, given that it just pops up. <laughs> The I imagine it it's in the must have been there somewhere. Oh, that's such a lovely touch. That's very unique. The whole thing is, is beautifully marked. Carla, congratulations. You've done a great job. And we're going to warmly welcome Carla Cumber into our special display in Northern Ireland, which I'm very proud to say is in Lisburn, in our space. So thanks to Robert, Anthony, and Joe and the team there um, for putting our display up in their gallery. So Carla Cumber is going to be the first new addition to the display in Lisburn. So thank you so much. And thanks very well, much for, for inspiring. We're, we're, our troop of Millies is growing. Yes, hopefully she won't be the only Cumber Millie in, in our well, space. Hopefully there'll be more. <laughs> we'll wait and see. But listen, thank you very much and for making it even, to me, seem like a relatively easy process to do it and for marking yours up so beautifully in memory of your own great granny, who's a Millie herself. Thank you, John. We'll see you soon. Bye. All the best. Bye for now.